Hello brothers and sisters in Christ. If you see a little glare, I'm leaving the windows open. It's a beautiful day today. And some of my Bible study videos, you've seen me wear a sweater and the knitted cap, and you're saying, well, it's summertime. Why are you wearing, you know, the sweater? Uh, brothers and sisters Christ, I go off the old man's AC. And the old man's AC is what? Windows and fans. Windows and fans. So at night, I open up all the windows, I set up the fans where they take air out, all the hot air out of the house, and then bring cold air in in the evenings. And I get the house as cold as can be, so in the mornings, if it's cold, I wear my sweater and, 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 the, and the knitted cap. Uh, summer hasn't really hit here hardcore yet, but we're waiting for it, we're waiting for it. We've had a few days where we hit 90 to 100, but for the most part, it's, it's, it's foggy in the morning. Here on the mountainside, on the ocean, by the ocean and the sun won't come out till around noon. So right now where I'm doing this, it's 11.25. So it's getting close to noon. The sun came out earlier today than normal. So we're getting back, to, we're gonna get to our sunny day. But brothers and Christ, I just wanna say I love my brothers and sisters Christ. I'm praying for you, thank you for praying for me. And I pray, because I, I got a few things to go through and I don't wanna forget things. I pray that you're staying in God's word every day, that you're praying every day, and that you're doing everything you can to take God's word, hide it in your heart, and live it. Brothers is Christ, and being there for one another. This is just a little update video of some of the things that God has done for me. And we're going to go over a couple messages from brethren. And uh, let's, let's hit this one. The lady that helped me buy the house, okay, the realtor, uh, she sends me envelopes every year. And she sends me dollar lotto tickets, like six or seven dollar lottos. I always have to throw those away. I don't want anything to do with that. And brothers says Christ, neither should you. Shouldn't be into gambling, okay, in any way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. But that being said, the important thing is, is it lets me know how long I've been here. And it says, congratulations on another for a wonderful year in your home. And it says, happy, lucky, number seventh anniversary. So this month, I've been in this home for seven years. And I know some of you are like, well, what's the big deal? Why are you even mentioning it? Brother says Christ, there's some people that are blessed um, my grandparents, uh, they could say they lived in that home for 35 years. Some of uh, my grandparents in Oklahoma, they were in that home for almost 50 years. Right? And my whole life, I've never lived in one place longer than six years. And only one time did I live in a place for six years. All the other time, it was short, three years here, two years there. I was in the military going all over the place. I never lived in one place for longer than six years. So when I got this, and it was like seven, I was like, Lord, is this the longest I've ever lived in one place? Yeah, it is. It's a milestone. So um, it's some, some people, some brethren, they live out, that they're serving the Lord. Back in the day, they would live out of their, um, what do you call it, luggage, okay? They'd have bags, and they'd live out of those bags, just traveling all over to help the Lord out. Uh, some brethren had it tough growing up, and they moved around a lot. Some brethren have been blessed that their whole lives were spent in one home. So they lived in, in a home until they were 18, 16 to 18 years old. They got to spend 18 years in one home. And you get great memories. I, that wasn't me. Okay, I only lived in a home for six years. Six, six and a half years. So seven years, I've just passed a milestone. I, I, I'm shocked I've been out here seven years. I've been out here uh, seven years. Um, at the old house where God saved, when I got saved, I was at my old house was two years, and uh, there was uh, six months in between. So I'm getting close to ten years of being saved, brother says Christ. I'm about to hit my ten year mark. I'm about to be ten years old. And in the comment section, brother says this isn't bragging, but just out of curiosity, how old are you? How old are you, brother says Christ? Okay. How long has it been? And, and these 10 years, Brother Jesus Christ, haven't been easy. It's been a long road. A long road. God has had, my life has changed. It's not the same. I've made some big mistakes. I've gone through troubles, heartaches. I've had joys. I've had peace. It's, I almost want to say it's been an adventure, but some of those adventures was going in the wrong direction. I've been make, I made some bad choices. But brothers is Christ, the joy in the journey, the joy in the salvation that God has given us, living for Him every day. We need to live for Him every day. Um, so, real quick, let's get over to here. Remember I asked you, brothers is Christ, to pray for the Bibles? 
I've been buying some Bibles for brethren overseas. Praise God that he's blessed me with being able to do that. And I got word back from the brethren in Belgium. And it says, hello, brother. Just a quick message from us. We are currently in a small town in the mountains in the Ardenias, if I'm pronouncing that properly, Ardenias. We also try to convey the message of gospel here. And brother, that's what we should always do. And when you go, the people say, we can't take vacation. Well, there's no such thing as taking a vacation from being a Christian. There's no such thing as taking a vacation from serving the Lord, which is supposed to be every day. So there's nothing wrong with you know, taking a trip somewhere, but take some gospel tracks. Take some gospel tracks with you. Take some gospel tracks with you. Take some booklets with you, okay? And if you can, because I have some in my, in my truck, if you can, take some old Bibles. I'll use these as an example, but I'm going to explain these <laughs> here in a second. But take some old Bibles you find at dollar stores. or There's some $10 Bibles at the... Uh, I'm trying to think of the name because there's two of them. There's Church Bible... Let's see if I can remember this. There's ch local church Bible publishers and then church Bible publishers. There's two websites where you can get some good Bibles, King James Bibles. And you get some cheap Bibles for 10 bucks that if you spend $100, you got 10 to t when you go on a trip that you can hand out some Bibles if someone wants a Bible. Okay? We're always serving the Lord wherever we are. By all means, we can take trips. I take trips. When I'm going to talk about this, I take a trip once a month down to Gold Beach. Are up. It's up to Gold Beach. I take the back highway, which is beautiful, the long way, and I get up to Pistol River, cut back to the main highway, and go the rest of the way to Gold Beach. And there's a used bookstore there. There's an old-fashioned pizza place there. I grab a pizza. I go set by the water. I watch the fishermen fish. The boats come in at the marina. And I listen to the Word of God. I listen to um, good music, uh, peaceful music, wordless music. Uh, sometimes I've got gospel like hymns, old hymns, um, but then I go around a gospel tract, okay? But I make trips, and some of, the, some of the trips are fruitful, and it's a great time to get away from the house, to get away from the computer, <laughs> and, and get away from the screen, and get out in nature where God is. I make a trip up there, I'll make a trip down to Crescent City once a month. So I'll try to make two trips once a month, but I always try to take gospel tracts with me. I've got Bibles, extra Bibles in my truck. So I've had, I have given people rides that don't have vehicles, mm -hmm. and I've given people Bibles. They said, you want a King James Bible? Here's a King James Bible, and I've given King James Bibles out to people. These brothers and sisters of Christ are setting a good example for me, and I'm trying to set a good example. That's how we are. We're supposed, as iron sharpeneth iron, we're supposed to be good examples for one another and encouraging one another. Right. Gospel is out here. We will send you photos in, in the course of the next few days. I hope I get some. That, that, probably beautiful up there. So that you can see where we are. Everything else is fine with us, and the Bibles are on their way. Because they can, they can track them once I mail them. So, Brother Says Christ, please, please, please. I sent some Bibles again. And I always ask for prayer when I send Bibles out. That they get there safe. Okay, there's times where I get boxes here and they're all torn up. Okay. Right? There's time, uh, just because it's the post office or anything doesn't mean it's guaranteed to get there in one piece. We want the Bibles to get there in one piece, and we want the Bibles to get into hands of people that will actually read them. And then, after they read them, they get to, to the point where they take it, put it in their heart, and live it. Okay? So, please, please pray for those Bibles to make it on time. Everything else fine here with us, and the Bibles are on their way, thank you. We pray for your for a safe arrival. Please pray for a safe arrival. Hope you're well and hear from us in a few days. Sincere, the brother and sister in Christ. So I just wanted to bring that up again about the Bibles. Please pray, brother and sister Christ, for any ministry. When the ministry is trying to help brethren or help overseas, stateside. Uh, brother and sister Christ, it's not just Bibles. It's not just gospel tracts. Uh, when's the last time you've helped a brother in Christ out with food and raiment? When's the last time you helped a brother or sister in Christ out with a bill? If God's blessed you with abundance, are you helping those that are lacking? Okay. Just just kind of throwing that out there, just just as a challenge, brother Jesus Christ. If you if you get pricked and get so bent out of shape, because what are you trying to say? I'm saying we need to help each other out more. Okay. We need to help each out out more than than trying to keep a dead building up and running. Okay, or a ministry office that, you know, someone buying a building and calling it a ministry office and wasting a lot of money on that. Okay, this is my home. Praise God. You know where the ministry is, Brothers Christ? This is the ministry. 
This is the ministry. This is the temple. This is the ministry. This is what matters. Not this. This is a blessing. This is a blessing. It's in my home. This is where I live. Okay? If God calls me out, God calls me out. It's, it's His will to call me out. And I go somewhere else and do something for the Lord. But brothers and sisters Christ, when's the last time you helped one another out? Right? Just something to throw you away. Something to throw you away. All right, I want to share my books. I found two books. I don't always find something these days. Sometimes I, I, I left it in there, but my favorite Bible that I use for during the winter when I read, I'm stuck inside because of all the raining, so I'll listen to Alexander Scorvey and I'll open up and follow along because it doesn't have any of the um, bookmarks. And I can use paper to bookmark it. But it's also kind of old, so I use it for turning, slow turning, as I'm listening to Alexander Scorvey and I'm reading and following along. I don't really use it for Bible studies because if you've seen uh, I had to, I had a brother mock me. I just don't get brethren these days. I had a brother mock me and laugh because I was turning the pages too fast and I ripped one of my pages. When I'm doing Bible studies and I'm flipping through a lot and trying to get past farther, you need the strong paper. In the old days, you had to be slow and take your time because the paper wasn't that strong. Okay? I just don't want to rip it. But I found it at the bookstore. So I found these two books at the bookstore. And I decided to take them to add them to my collection. So I'll try to show some pictures up here as I'm talking about them. This is the Jewish Public Publication Society, and I saw this up there a few times and decided, eh, I guess I'll add one to my collection, because there was a study that 33rd Book put out, and it talked about the order that um, we put the Bible in, the Old Testament, we have an order, and we're, we're now the priesthood of the believer, and we have authority over Scripture that we can put it in the order that God tells us to put it in. But he started talking about the Jews' Old Testament, and how they have the order. So I found the Holy Scriptures. That's the uh, the just the he the Old Testament Hebrew. Okay, for, according to the Masoretic text, it's supposed to be from the same text as this, but it's not going to read exactly the same. That's why this is what I read. But I can use this as an example for teaching purposes. Okay. So let's see if I can find it. Here we are. Table of contents. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Those five seem to always be the first five. And I've got a Torah book up there. That's the Torah. That's what they call the Torah for the, for the Jews. It's the first five books of the Bible. Okay, here it is. Table of contents. Okay. Uh, then they do Joshua, Judges, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel. Then they do the Twelve, Hosea, jo Joel, Amos, the, minor pro the prophets, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. Uh -huh. And one of the things I remember him teaching is, is they put, they separate it into the books of Moses, the prophets, and the writings. Okay, the law, the books of Moses, the law, the prophets, the writings. And Jesus even referred to it. Okay? But what they did is they put Daniel in with the writings. So once you get done with that, you get to the writings. You have Psalms, Proverbs, Job, Song of Solomon, Ruth, Lamentations, Ecclesiastes, Esther, Daniel, Ezra, Ezra and Nehemiah, the rebuilding, and First and Second Chronicles they put in with the, the writings. So their writings include Psalms down to Chronicles, and then you have the Law, which is Genesis to Deuteronomy, and then they have the Joshua's down to Ezekiel. You got Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, then you start getting to some of the prophets. It's just it's a different order. Like I said, I'll take a picture of this and show the table of contents up there. But I wanted this up there because it talks about the Law, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Then you get into it. I didn't block the papers, but once you get done with the law, it starts with the prophets, and it includes jo jo Joshua all the way through the twelve, where it goes all the way through Malachi. So Joshua, Judges, Samuel, first, second Samuel, first, second Kings. Everything we just read, all the way down to Malachi 770. So when you get to down to 770, and you get to Psalms, 
Should have blocked this. Got it ready, but I didn't. Forgive me, brothers. Seven seventy. Here it is. Then it does the writing. So that's how they separate things. You've got the law all the way to Deuteronomy for the for the Jewish Old Testament. Then you have the prophets, and they do a little different order than we do. And then you got the writings. Okay. Psalms, Proverbs, Job, Songs of Solomon, Ruth, Lamentation, Ecclesiastes, Esther, Daniel. See, Daniel's not in with the prophets. We know he prophesies. But they, they don't know what to do with Daniel, so they throw him in with just the writings. They don't want Daniel to be prophets. But um, Ezra, Nehemiah, First and Second Chronicles. So this was a find that I have that I can use for um, teaching purposes. And mainly to show that that's how the Bible is broken up, and that's how Jesus refers to the Bible. You got the law, you got the prophets, and you have the writings. Mm -hmm. Oh, here it is, the law. Using gospel tracts, they're not folded yet, but using gospel tracts to mark off. And I'll get some pictures and put them in with the video. Okay, so this was one of the finds I found. I don't know if you guys find it interesting or not, but I find it interesting. This one was also a one. I've tested, I still got to test a little bit further to see if it's accurate. But it says testaments, mainly the New Testament. And it's Italian and English. And what it does, and I'll show some pictures up here, is it'll put Italian on the left column and English on the right column. And the reason I've tested, I went through and grabbed some of the verses. There's some verses you always check right away because they really mess them up. Uh, 2 Timothy. And you got to be careful because the titles... <laughs> Ephesus, Philippi, Colossians, Thessalonians, here's Timothy, 1st Timothy, 2nd Timothy, Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be shamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Almost all Bible perversions take out the word study. Now I know I said almost all. But they also take out rightly dividing the word of truth. So this verse, 2 Timothy 2, 15, is usually the, one of the main verses to check. And I checked it, I checked some of them, but I still got to verify this. But I thought this was a very neat find that it's, it's Italian on one side, and it's Italian, it's... Uh, it's the English being transcribed, it's the King James Bible English being transcribed into Italian. Right. So I thought this is very interesting. Very interesting. You can find some really good finds sometimes at old bookstores, Brothers of Christ. You guys should try. If you find that you have a old used bookstore that has tons of used books, go there and look up some books and try to find some old Bibles. Sometimes they sell old Bibles, they sell old books. I found a book over there. Um, I think I showed it once, maybe but it's called the Bread Bible. And it's not the Word of God Bible. Remember, Bible just means collection of books. That's all Bible means, okay? Uh, the Bible, I know a brother slipped up and said that Jesus doesn't save, the Bible, say, the Bible saves. Uh, no, the Bible just means collection of books. And the collection of books have only been there for the last four or 500 years. Before that, what they have, it's God's Word that saves. Lowercase w word. And the Bible says, He saved us. Who's the He? Jesus Christ. It's both. You got the capital W word and you got the lowercase w word. It's both that save. You need both. Okay? It's the spoken word, which is what Paul was doing in his day. Then it got written down. Then it got all collected. But the whole point is, is Bible just means collection of books. Okay? That's all Bible means. So there's a book over there I've got called the Bread Bible. And what it is is they took all these recipe books on bread and they put it all together into one volume. So it's all these books put into one book, and it's a big, thick book and everything. Okay? That's all Bible means. So be careful with that. But you can find some good finds, Brother Jesus Christ. Oops. But it's hard to read some of these words because they say the book itself in, 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 Italy, in Italian. So when you're trying to look up words like 
It says Saint Timothy, it says Timotio, I think is how you pronounce it. So uh, But Second Timothy two fifteen, like I said, there's certain words, certain verses that you'll learn that you can use to verify if it's an actual lines up with the King James Bible, or if it doesn't. So this is, what it, this is why I compare every book I come across to the actual King James Bible. Does it line up? So far it does. So hopefully this is a keeper. If not, now well, another book to help use for the pages to help me start the fire during the winter on the wood stove. So um, that's going to end this with, like I said, just a little update video, just talking and fellowship. I got an email from a brother in Christ just the right time. Thank you, brother. And brothers of Christ, I'm telling you, a words of encouragement at just the right time really help out. When you're feeling low or you're feeling like, especially men in ministry, you feel like, oh, I don't know if I'm really helping, Lord. Am I really being a servant to the brother? Am I helping them? Are they listening? Or am I being of any use to you, Lord? Or am I just wasting my time? That's when you start getting really negative. It's never a waste of time to preach the word. It's never a waste of time to try to put truth out there. But sometimes you feel like it's unfruitful. And when it gets unfruitful, you start getting negative. And maybe I'm wasting my time and I can better spend my time elsewhere. So I, and you just get the right word of encouragement. And this is just a short, just a very short email. I'm going to read it. And it just really encouraged me, Brother Jesus Christ. It says, Hi, Brother Philip. The Lord has put it in my heart to thank you for praying for me. I've been saying in a lot of videos lately, I've been praying for the Brethren Hardcore in these last days. With the falling away. The falling away from this. And I'm going to get into another study where I believe one of the foundations to the falling away is that you're being, where the brethren as a whole is being infected with two types of diseases. Okay. The yea hath God said a better reign would be, while professing this book is perfect from cover to cover, we're not to add to it, we're not to subtract from it, add thou not unto God's word, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. But they add to and subtract from God's word. Thy words are true words, a silver tried in the fire seven times. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. This is perfect. Then why do we add to the word, the word of God so much today and subtract from the word of God so much today? That's what, that'll be another study. But I believe that right there is what's causing a lot of the division in the body of Christ. The attitude that, hey, I can add to God's word and subtract from God's word if I feel like it. Everyone else does. So one of the biggest things that's causing the falling away is the yea hath God said a better running would be disease. While professing to be Bible believers, you're still correcting the word of God, changing the word of God, and then people are arguing over things that aren't even in the scriptures. Trinity, rapture, millennial kingdom, church age, um, the great tribulation, and so on and so on. All those things aren't in the Bible. What, that's what's causing division. People are arguing. They're trying to stand for stuff that aren't in the Bible. that isn't in the Scripture. Okay? That's one of them. The other thing is sin. Sin for a season. People inviting sin in. Sin for a season. Excuse me. Excuse me just a second, brothers this Christ. Herb. Herb. But the second thing I believe, brothers and sisters Christ, that's causing division in the body of Christ is, and, is that people are, are getting into sin and wickedness. They're starting to get led by the flesh, and they're choosing the flesh over the Word of God. And they'll wrestle the Scriptures to their own destruction to justify sin for a season, or to justify using words and terms that aren't in the Scriptures. And I've been praying hardcore for all of you, brothers and sisters Christ, and I keep asking for prayer for me, okay, that I line up with this book. And that I put the flesh down, and I don't get the... Remember the three enemies. I don't let the flesh get the better of me, my flesh. I don't let the world get the better of me, compromising with the world, getting into idolatry with the world, looking like the world, acting like the world, be not conformed to this world, love not the world, you have to be a friend of the world, okay? Uh, you're supposed to present your bodies as a living sacrifice. You're going to put the flesh down every day. You're supposed to keep the world out and be separate from the world. As far as being separate, we go out to the world and preach the gospel to them. Gospel tracks. Oops, 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 oops. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. Uh, we go out and preach the gospel track, uh, gospel to the world, but we're supposed to be separate from the world. 
And Satan comes in, and that's when you start getting doctrines of devils coming in. When Satan comes in and his ministers, his children, you're of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. You have all these men that are false converts. There's, we call them servants of Satan. False converts. The Bible calls them wolves in sheep's clothing. And they come in and they start bringing in damnable heresies, false gospels. They start doing doctrines of devils, like the Trinity. Okay? Doctrines of devils, like post and mid-trib. Doctrines of devils, like in this dispensation, for today, from the death of Jesus Christ to the catching away of the body of Christ. Anybody teaches that you, there might be a way you can lose your salvation, or that you can lose your salvation and have to get it back, that's a doctrine of devils. We're fighting them. And I'm praying for the brethren, because those three enemies seem to be really... The brethren aren't fighting. You're not putting on the whole armor of God. I didn't mean to get into a whole study. I'm not trying to get into a whole study. But, brothers and Christ, you've got to put on the whole armor of God. That helmet for a hope of salvation. Looking for that blessed hope by keeping your flesh down and living according to the Word of God. Doing things God's way. That's where the breastplate of righteousness comes in. You're, doing, you're an ambassador for Jesus Christ. His righteousness is imputed to you. You're a representative of Jesus Christ to this dark world. You're supposed to be a light to this dark world with, the, with how you live and how you talk. Live and talk. Verbal witness and, fi and living witness. Okay? We're supposed to be a light to this dark world. We're supposed to gird up our loins with truth. In other words, we're supposed to be doing work for the Lord. We're supposed to be reading this book because that truth that you're girding up your loins with is the sword, which is the truth, the Word of God. You're supposed to be reading this book. You're supposed to be studying this book. You're supposed to be applying this book to your life, working, doing the work of the Lord, getting sin out of your life. And it's something as simple as, hey, God, you have a job, nine to five job, okay, five days a week, and in between you're taking care of your family, but you're, re you're starting your day with the Word of God, that's doing the work of the Lord. You're starting your day with the Word of God in prayer, you're ending your day with the Word of God in prayer. You're reading the Bible to your family. You're praying with your family, all right? You give God glory in all things. When some great things happen, you praise God and thank Him. When bad things happen, here's the hard part. You praise God and give God thanks while you ask God to help you with whatever bad thing that's going on. Lord, it's going on for a reason. Praise you, O Lord. If it be your will, please take it. I remember Paul doing that. He had a thorn in the side. And God said, my grace is sufficient for thee. Praise you, O Lord. This thorn's here for a reason. But Lord, if it be your will, please take it from me. Oh, no, I need you to have it for a while. My grace is sufficient for thee. All right. Brother says Christ, uh, I want to make sure I get all the armor of God. Your feet shod with the preparation of peace. When someone looks at you, is you are you a man of... Uh, I know that the Antichrist is going to come back. The man of sin, the son of perdition is going to come back. That Antichrist that shall come, which is the man of sin, the son of perdition, he's going to act like he's going to be some kind of peaceful man. Remember, he's a copycat. Okay? He's the ultimate um, fake and fraud, counterfeit. We are supposed to be shot with the preparation of peace. Could it be possible to live peacefully among all men? Okay. If it be possible, live peaceably among all men. We're supposed to be we be peaceful, and we're supposed to be preaching the gospel of peace. We want to see people get saved. We're not here to cause problems. We're not force we don't force conversion. We're not trying to purposely start fights. We're not purposely going out and being part of the backbiting, whispering, name-calling, uh, mocking, uh, railing for railing, bearing false witness, all this stuff that causes contentions. And the Bible says, by pride cometh contentions. You've got to get pretty prideful to be like that. The mocking, the name-calling, the backbiting and whispering, railing for railing, uh, rewarding evil for evil. The Bible says we're not to reward evil for evil. But to overcome evil with good. If your enemy hunger, feed him. If he's naked, clothe him. And so doing, you heap coals of fire on his head. Okay, we're supposed to be wearing the the shoes or the the uh, the preparation of peace. Shod, our feet are supposed to be shod with the preparation of peace. And above all, above all, taking the shield of faith. Faith in the Word of God. We don't add to it. We don't subtract from it. Like I said, today we've got that disease. We're going to get another video on this, but we've got that disease where people are adding to and subtracting from. Jesus very wants to walk around, so please forgive me. But, brothers and Christ, that's why I'm praying for you, and I ask for that prayer for me. Men in ministry definitely need prayer these days. 
that they don't get too prideful and puffed up and thinking more highly of themselves than they ought to think and start thinking they can correct this book. That they can treat brethren however they want to treat brethren and treat the lost world however they want to treat the. They start straying from this book and their pride and their vanity. Okay? We need prayer. Brethren need prayer. Okay? Sorry to get off that, but you're praying for me, I need it right now. I'm praying for the brother in Christ here. I'm praying for all the brothers. says, thank you, brother. You are in my prayers. God bless you and our brother. Our... And oh, brother, I'm looking forward to meeting the Lord in the air. Oh, brother, I'm looking forward to meeting the Lord in the air. Maybe she'll go in the other room. Her feet might make a lot of noise. I'm trying to get her to sit down. Forgive me, O oh Lord. Forgive me, Lord, and forgive me, brethren. Um, God knows what he's doing. God knows what he's doing. So God bless you, and I'm looking forward to meeting the Lord in the air. Meeting the Lord in the air. Where do we get that at? Meeting the Lord in the air. Okay. Where do we get that at? Uh, turn to Th 1 Thessalonians 5. Thought you thought you can get away with not having to open the Bible, didn't you? <laughs> turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. It's, good for, it's a good chapter. We can back up to chapter 4. It's actually chapter 4. Verse 15. For this we say unto you by the word of our Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of our Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and with the voice of archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Comfort one another. Brothers of Jesus Christ, I don't want to get too ahead of myself, but we're supposed to comfort one another with these words. Why is it a comfort? And why is it a comfort? We're going to get to that. Turn to 1 Corinthians 15, 51. 1 Corinthians 15, 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruption must put on incorruption. Amen. That's, that's the comfort. This corruption must put on incorruption. We no longer have to deal with this wicked body of flesh. And this moral must put on immortality. We don't have to worry about growing old. Right now I'm growing old. I'm realizing I'm, I'm being limited in some of the things I can do. I can't do the things I used to do when I was 30. Okay. Especially on a hillside. So when this corruption shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. The law of sin and death. But thanks be to God, which giveth us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Brothers Jesus Christ, we're to live looking for that blessed hope. Looking for it. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior. Right. He's going to... We're sealed into the day of redemption. He's going to give us a new body. We're going to have a new life with Him. And that's great. But until that happens, therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable. What this means unmovable? This is the foundation. That's the unmovable part. I could be wrong on something. But the unmovable part is this Word of God is the foundation. Jesus is the foundation. God is the foundation. His Word is the foundation. It's God's way. Not man's way. It's God's way, not the flesh's way. It's God's way, not Satan's way. And some of the brethren are starting to line up with Satan's way. Be careful. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Remember what the Bible says? Uh, 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be shamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. 
All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. Ephesians 2, 8, 9, and 10. For by grace are you saved, and that not of yourselves, but for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are created in Christ Jesus unto good works works that have before been ordained that we should walk in them. While we're waiting for that blessed hope, the great glorious appearing of our God and Savior, are we supposed to be sitting here twiddling our thumbs and waiting? No. For this is Christ, we're supposed to be doing the work of the Lord. Are you starting your day with the Word of God every morning? Are you ending the day with the Word of God? Are you starting your day with prayer? Are you ending your day with prayer? Are you giving God glory in everything? Giving Him thanks in everything? Praising Him? Do you sing a hymn every day? It wouldn't hurt to sing a hymn every day. I'm not as hardcore on that, but I'm learning it really helps me too. To see, I have a, my book open on the, uh, my dining table. The dining table for one person. Um, I got a little candle there during the wind, uh, winter. I'll do dinner and light a candle to kind of make it more like festive where it's like I'm not by myself. But I have that open there and I'll sing a hymn every day. Sometimes you get to memorizing hymns without even thinking about it. You'll be doing something and that hymn just comes to mind and you'll just start humming that hymn. Singing the hymn in your head or even out loud. Singing some hymns. Are you worshiping God every day? Giving Him praise, giving Him glory, giving Him thanks in all things. Are you abounding in the work of the Lord? Some people say, well, you've got to be in full-time ministry and you've got to be like those guys behind the battle buildings, like behind the pulpits. In these days... There was a day I was like, yeah, those are great men of God, but today? No, doing great work of the Lord is being a living witness and a verbal witness. Handing out gospel tracts set when you go to town. Leaving gospel tracts places when you go places. Handing out King James Bibles uh, during your free time. For those who are working hard to provide for their own, because that's what God has you. Those that have an abundance that can help those that are lacking. God blesses you with an abundance so you can be a servant to the brethren that are lacking. Abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain. Remember what I just said? Sometimes it's getting negative, like it's, where's the fruit and everything? My labor is not in vain. I'm going to keep preaching the word of the Lord until God shuts me down and says no more. They don't want it, no more. Kicks me off YouTube. Takes away the internet. I'm going to be here trying to hand out gospel tracts and trying to witness a little bit more. Because what we're all going to have to do if we get kicked out, we can't talk to the brethren through here. Well, we're going to have to go out and, and lead people to Christ and get brothers and sisters in Christ by leading them to Christ. It's going to be probably a good push for the brethren to get out there and start witnessing a little bit more if we go through that hard of a time. But he says here, I'm looking forward to be meeting the Lord in the air. But God put it on my heart to do this other verse here. If I can remember where it's at. Let's see, because I looked it up last. There's 2 Corinthians chapter 4, the very last one, okay. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, the very last verse. While we look on, not on the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. And if you go back... And read, it talks about, like verse 8, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not despaired. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Christ. You have to keep putting the body down. Picking up your cross daily and following Jesus. You have to deny yourself, pick up your cross daily, and follow Him. Always bearing about in the body the dying of Jesus Christ. This is talking about putting the flesh down. I must become less so he can become more. Remember John said that? I must become less, he must become more. For instruction righteous, that's our life. If you want Jesus to really shine in your life, he's got to be everything. His word's got to be everything. His way of living has to be everything. His way of doing things. His way of saying things. His way of how you treat one another. It's got to be done God's way. How you treat your brother and sister Christ. How you treat the lost world. And meekness instructing those that oppose themselves. 
dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our bodies, being a light for Jesus Christ. But the important part I wanted to point out is the temporal versus the eternal. Why is that a comfort? The catching ways of comfort? Because this life is not it. I think it's 2 Peter or 1 Peter where it talks about be ready to give an answer of the hope that is in you. That blessed hope. Why? I've had it with brethren. Why aren't you scared? The fire comes through here. Aren't you scared of losing everything? This isn't it. I have an eternal home. I'm, this is my home away from home. I'm an ambassador in a foreign land. This is my home away from home. My real home is up there in heaven. My rewards are up there in heaven. This is just temporal. So no matter what hardship we go through down here, whatsoever, it's not, it, we're not taking it with us. And on the, the flip side, all the blessings and everything you think is more important down here, like the money, love of money is the root of all evil, why some have cut it after they've erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. When you think things are so, all your wealth down here and everything that's so important down here, you can't take it with you when you die. You can't take it with you when you get caught up. Some brethren are getting distracted by the things down here. Trying to live their dream life. Getting, focused, getting distracted by money and wealth. Be careful. This is all temporal. We're not going to be taking this. When I go, everything gets left behind. Jesus says, Philip, yes, my Lord, my King, come up hither. Boom, I'm going up. All this stuff, I won't even look back. Remember uh, Lot and his wife? His wife looked back, turned to a pillar of salt. Jesus talks about anyone that looks back is not fit for the king. Uh, uh, you know, for instruction righteousness is not fit to serve the Lord. I, I can't remember the verse exactly, so forgive me. I'm trying to memorize verses, so forgive me. But somebody put to the plow, and I'm making sure, I want to make sure I'm not taking it out of context as far as uh, doctrinally, if it's talking about the kingdom of heaven. But versus today, the spiritual kingdom. But we're not supposed to be looking back. That old man, Paul warned about not resurrecting the old man. Don't resurrect the old man. What's that? You're looking back. We're supposed to be looking forward. We're not supposed to be looking back. What's forward? That blessed hope. This brother in Christ is encouraging me greatly. Thank you, brother. It says, God bless you. And, oh, brother, I am looking forward to meeting the Lord in the air. So am I. He puts an exclamation point. I just don't, I don't want to yell right now. But so am I, brother. So am I. And brothers of Christ, I'm looking forward to all of us being together. No more division. We're all the same mind and the same judgment. We all have the full mind of Christ. We can have the mind of Christ today with the Holy Spirit, but we're going to have the full mind of Christ. No more division. We're all going to be together. Right now, God has us all spread out all over the world. We're all going to be together someday. Praise God. All of us are going to be together someday. Okay? says here, I hope you are well and keeping in the word, brother, with prayer. Thank you. I am. I am trying to. So there's sometimes that I get into a whining fest and the Lord reminds me that, hey, when's the last time you listened to Alexander Scorby read the Bible? When's the last time you read the Bible? Uh, you're praying, but how about singing to him? How about you go watch a Bible study? You're starting to get down. It's time to go do something that glorifies God that will lift that spirit back up. And that's what lifts the spirit up when your spirit gets down, brothers of Christ, when you start doing something for the Lord, doing good work with your hands, like gardening, uh, chickens. Right now we're doing uh, work on the deck to get it fixed and repaired a little bit here and there and get it restained. Uh, I had to hire some help to do that. Uh, like I said, when you start getting older, you can't do some of the things you used to do. But... Brothers of Christ, staying in the Word of God, staying in prayer, Bible studies, singing hymns, doing good works with your hands that glorify God, not fun is flesh, flesh is fun. There's nothing wrong with having a little fun. Yes, there is, because fun doesn't glorify God. The flesh, living after the flesh, doesn't go up. The Bible says in Romans 8, if you live after the flesh, or no, they that live after the flesh cannot please God. Right? Fun never pleases God. Good work with your hands that bring joy and peace and happiness and good rewards, good fruit. That will lift your spirits up, brother, says Christ. So thank you, brother. I pray you guys are also staying in the Word of God in prayer daily. The Lord has told me to remind you of this verse, 1 Timothy 2.4, King James Version. Who will have all men to be saved and to come into the knowledge of the truth? 
Amen, amen, amen. Brother says Christ, we need to remember that God's will is that who will, that's God's will, have all men to be saved and to come into the knowledge of the truth. God is willing that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God breaks people so many times in their life that someone goes to hell, they really fought God to go to hell. I like Brother Bruckman's study on that, the five surprises in hell, when he said in there, when someone goes to hell, they really have to fight God to go to hell. And they do. Because God's not willing that anybody goes to hell. He's not. And we need to remember, if that's God's attitude, Brother Sis Christ, some of us, why isn't that our attitude? Why isn't we acting like we want people to get saved? Some brethren are getting to the point where they're getting all bitter and hateful and bent out of shape, and they're acting like they don't want anybody to get saved. They're done. Well, God's done saving people today. They act like it. They don't say it, but they act like it. Why isn't our attitude... We're, we're one, I, I, I have my, all my neighbors, I gave them gospel tracts. I gave them the booklet that Brother JT did on how to be saved and know it before he kind of got high on the horse also and started to do a worldly ministry versus a godly ministry that he once started with. Brothers and Christ, I give them to all the neighbors. I still give God glory in front of them. I give them uh, credit. There's times where we were talking about trees. Uh, one of the neighbor's sons got stuck in a tree, and I went. And I remember talking to a lost neighbor. I said, well, in the Bible, it talks about King David, his son Absalom. He got stuck in a tree. And I started talking to him about the Word of God, just like the Old Testament. I still talk with them with my words. I'm trying to glorify God and be a witness to them, giving God glory and everything. Okay, why? They've rejected God now. But God might break them several more times before they, he says enough's enough and sends them to hell. Kills them and sends them to hell. They still have a chance to get saved today. You can reject God 50 times, but that 51th time that you accept him, that's all that matters. You can reject God 100 times, but that 101 time that God gives, breaks you again, and they accept Jesus Christ and get truly saved and born again. Repentance towards God, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, confess both in prayer, and ask God to save them. That's what matters. All heaven rejoice over one sinner that repenteth. One sinner that repents and believes and gets saved. Brothers of Christ, do you still have that attitude? Do you still have a heart for seeing people get saved? I've had some brothers say, I know a lot of the world just, we're in the last days. We're in the last days, everything's falling away. I forgot to unplug. <laughs> we're in the last days. I understand some people, this can get in the way, brother says Christ, of this. Okay? The difference is, God knows there's a lot of people that are going to go to hell. He even said, Broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be that go in thereat. He knows. But his heart is he wants to see people get saved. I know in these last days a lot of people are going to reject the gospel. They're going to reject the truth. I know in these last days that a lot of brethren are going to fall away because the Bible pro prophesied the falling away. And no matter what I say, they're not going to, a lot of them aren't going to get back up. But you know what my heart is? My heart is trying to pick everyone back up. Getting back in that standing position. My heart is, I want to see people get saved. I'm still going to keep trying. I keep remembering Paul. I'm sorry for going on, and I apologize, brothers. But I remember Paul, he's like, I'm done with the Jews. You know he said that two times? Three times. He might have said it three times. I'm done with the Jews, I'm only going to the Gentiles. Then he goes to a whole new area where there's a whole fresh set of Jews that never heard the gospel, and his heart, his heart... His head's like, I'm not doing it. His heart, I need to witness to these Jews. And he witnesses to them. Some get saved, but most of them reject. Oh, I'm never going to preach the Jews to them again. I'm only going to the Gentiles. Then he gets carted all the way off to Rome, and there's a set of Jews in, the, in Rome. And he's like, they need the gospel. And his heart, once again, gets involved. They need the gospel. Even though he said he wouldn't, he did. Why? Because, brothers, we can know something, and then our heart is, we, we know that people aren't going to get saved. We're in the last days. But is your heart still, I want to see them get saved. I wish they'd get saved. I wish they'd drop their pride and go on about to establish their own righteousness. 
I wish the Lord could break them the way he broke me and got me saved. The way he got you saved. I want to see people get saved. Now, I'm not naive. I understand, brothers and sisters Christ, a lot of the world is going to reject Jesus Christ in these last days. We're going to have a falling away. But that's not going to stop me from fighting the falling away and trying to get brethren back up with my heart desire to see brethren get back up in a walking position. It's not going to stop me from preaching the gospel. And it shouldn't stop you. But with some brethren, they stop kind of really preaching the gospel. They start making videos against going out and preaching the gospel. Right. Brothers of Christ, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. God's will is that he wants to see people get saved. Now he knows not everybody's going to get saved. Brothers of Christ, our will needs to be lined up. Our will needs to line up with his will. I said this recently, not my will, but thy will be done. But then there's also, we're also supposed to pray that if God lets us live and do this and do that, that it, let it be God's will. I would say, Lord, if it's your will, can I do this? If it's your will, this is my plans for today. If it be your will, Lord, can we do this today? Right? My will is that we get that deck done today. I pray, but I ask God, Lord, thy will be done. I'd like to see the deck get done. Right? This Bible study, well, thy will be done. That's what needs to be our attitude, brothers and sisters of Christ. So thank you. It's just a short one, just like four lines and then a Bible verse. It was a great exhortation, brother. Thank you, thank you. So, Brothers of Christ, the, e the ministry email is in the About tab. Okay, The P.O. Box, the in ministry emails, you can mail letters, you can send or email electronic letters, you can mail actual letters. I've got my prayer wall over there. Okay, And everyone that ever mailed me a letter is on there. Even the ones that turned on me, called me names, that's on there. Okay, I've printed out some, letter uh, some emails and I put them on there. Okay. Why? So I can remember to pray. It's called a prayer wall for a reason. So I can pray for them. I pray for my brothers and sisters Christ. The ones that have, that have left me, I pray they're still reading their Bible every morning and every night. They're praying. They're still living for the Lord every day. They're still doing the work of the Lord. I miss them. I wish we could do the work of the Lord together. But I just pray that this their flesh, they haven't given into the flesh, they haven't given into the world, and Satan hasn't devoured him. Remember the Bible says, Satan goes around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Be sober, be vigilant, for your adversary the devil going around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. I pray for him, that they're still standing for the Lord and still living for the Lord. I pray for all of you. So... Just a little update. I didn't mean to get into it too much. Please forgive me, brothers and Christ. I wanted to show off some, some Bibles or some books that I found. Uh, just share a blessing with you that God shared with me. Seven years. Seven years of being here. Living here. God blessed me with living here for seven years in one place. It was such a blessing. Remember to pray for the books, the Bibles, that they get to their destination. All right, please, please. I always pray hardcore. Please, Lord, those Bibles, let them get there. And let them get into good hands that they can be fruitful. Take that word, hide it in their heart, and live it. Okay? So I'm going to end this with grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching. I'm praying for you. Please pray for me. And I'll see you in the next video.